separating data plane and control plane and why it matters. As engineering systems become more complex, architects, designers, and developers have to think about ways to optimize their systems for simplicity, performance, and resilience. A common approach is to view engineering systems as two logical constructs, the control plane and the data plane. The data plane is where most of the data transforms happen. The data plane is optimized for speed of processing, for simplicity, and for regularity. The control plane is what controls the data plane. The control plane is optimized for decision-making and, in general, facilitating and simplifying the data plane processing. In the IT infrastructure space, the approach of separating the control plane from the data plane was first made popular in the networking domain. Traditional networks were highly coupled. Decisions that involve how data flows through the network were made on the network element itself. Software-defined networking, or SDN, was introduced to counter the complexities of traditional networks. SDN involved separating the network architecture into data plane, that is, the network devices that forwards packets to their destination as quickly as possible, and control plane, the software that controls the network behavior. In fact, when you start looking for it, it appears everywhere. This approach is used in many other domains. If you look at the classical Unix file system, the process of creating files, opening and closing files is done in the control plane. However, functions such as write to file and read from file are done on the data plane. You see this concept applied to modern protocols such as NVMe. Control verbs are separate from data verbs. Often there is a submission queue at the entrance of the data plane and a completion queue at the exit of the data plane. These queues are set up and torn down by the control plane. Even ancient systems like SQL have this distinction. You can also view the act of compiling programs as a similar paradigm. You compile the program once and that is done in the control plane. After that, you can run the program many times in the data plane. This is in contrast with the concept of an interpreter where you interpret the program on the fly, i.e. the control plane and data plane are intermixed. The distinction continues for microservices and containers. The control plane instantiates a microservice in the data plane and eventually tears it down. You can even see this approach in self-driving cars. If the cockpit crashes, the data plane functionality keeps the car safely on the road and guides it to safety. As you've seen with the different examples, some functions are best abstracted into the control plane and others in the data plane. Here are the attributes that you want to think of when deciding how to best separate the two dimensions. As a general rule of thumb, the amount of work a control plane does is usually significantly smaller than the work done on the data plane. This separation of control plane and data plane is both logical and real. Code development, hardware development, infrastructure integration can all benefit from separating control plane and data plane functions. This separation delivers noteworthy advantages. Performance. With control functions out of the way of data flow, data plane instances can now be easily modulated to match bandwidth requirements. Data plane functions can run on specialized silicon for maximum performance, while control functions are run on a separate processor. Resilience. If there's a problem with the control plane, it should not hurt the data plane. If the control plane goes down, data plane continues. Simplicity. Software can be upgradable in flight to support continuous deployment. If functions need to change, you can just instantiate a new data plane and route data to the new data plane without taking down the whole system. Control can be distributed for improved overall management of systems. Overall, you can drive data plane or control plane innovations separately from the other plane. At Fungible, we recognize the benefits of this approach and have taken great care to separate data plane and control plane in both hardware and software at all levels of our solution. At the device level, we have developed a run-to-completion operating system for the data plane. Run-to-completion systems have tasks that are added to an event queue. 
A classical Linux OS runs on the control plane and schedules the events. The run to completion model reduces thread switching and interrupt overhead time, thus improving performance. The hardware accelerators that are integrated into the DPU also implements a clear data plane and control plane separation. Let's take a look at an accelerator which does compression. The compression level and the compression algorithm are set up by the control plane while the actual compression itself is done at the data plane. At the services level, in the storage stack, the NVMe protocol is implemented on the data plane and REST is implemented on the control plane. At the system level, the storage data path enabled by the device and services is now the data plane, while the controls for the storage system, for example, what to do when the system malfunctions, are implemented in the control plane. Last but not least, at the highest level, the servers now become the data plane, and the software which composes the server resources are in the control plane. At Fungible, we have fully embraced this approach of separating data plane and control plane at all levels of the solution. It is this philosophy that has enabled us to supercharge the data plane and achieve performance levels that would not have been remotely possible with the traditional convoluted approach.